Thanks for the opportunity um, to add yet another iconic football stadium to the list of the one, ones I've already presented in. Although I have to admit to you, after nearly 30 years of living in Europe, including pre-Brexit England, I still struggle calling it football if I can't pick the ball up and throw it forward. So what are we talking about? This idea of security operations. And to get, to get everybody on the same page, let's have a definition. So if I look at this, I can see the what. What is security operations? And we can agree or disagree on the definition. But it's not the what, it's the how. How do we build a security operations team? How do we do what is inherently a very difficult task? And that is really the question here, that it's typically, as it says, except for the largest of organizations, it's typically an ad hoc effort. And that's part of the root of the problem that we're dealing with. Because security operations, forget the fact of how it's organized, Security operations is becoming more and more difficult with a lot of factors, including, of course, the threat landscape, the technologies, the hackers, and the lack of skills. All of this is contributing to what is making a very critical and vital function more and more difficult. So let's start looking at some of these examples, and let's start with the threat landscape. Now, I, I hope everybody is familiar with this idea of a perimeter the boundary of your network where your users, applications, and devices are. That's the one we think about, our inside out look. We look at what we think we see. But there's an external attack surface as well, how the hackers see us, the outside in, and looking for those weak links. Remember, the whole idea of, of a hacker is to get into the network undetected and to remain there for as long as possible. Now, we think attacks by email, you've won a million dollars, all expense paid trip around the world, fine. But there's all these other ways of your external attack surface that need to be taken into account. You're not going to fix these, but the objective is to be aware of them and to understand that an attack can come from that area. So looking at that, looking at the other pieces of it, complexity. Getting in the way, I mean, these things, understanding what's going on. Now, at Fortinet, we have an arm of the company called FortiGuard, which is our threat intelligence arm. And we're dealing with billions of events per day coming into our labs. That's all of the things that are happening out in the field. And it's this complexity, this nature of the, of the problem, and the way most organizations are structured to deal with it. Everybody's familiar with the term silver bullet? Well, silver bullets only work on werewolves. They don't work in security operations or anything to do with security. Those knockoff products may look interesting, but they have their limitations as well. So all of this together is contributing to what is already a complex environment. And think about complexity. If you look at your larger network, both your security and your networking side, it's evolving. It changes constantly. It changes. It's an evolution, not a revolution. And keeping up with those changes, understanding what's going on, at the best, it interferes with your daily operations. But more importantly, and the worst, is that it interferes with your ability to understand when you're under attack and when somebody has gotten into the network. And that's the key piece here. The whole point of what I'm talking about is being able to reduce the amount of time it takes you to understand you've been breached. Now, this report comes from an organization called ESG, and I don't believe it for a minute. It says, what is that, 168 hours, if at all. It's not that long ago, it was 168 days, so I'm not really sure what's happened here. And in the longest that I'm aware of, that a company had been breached and did not know about it was 10 years. They didn't know it until the company went out of business and they were doing forensics on the company's computers that they finally found definitive proof that they had been hacked and that proprietary information had been exfiltrated over the course of those 10 years. And that's what security operations, that's why we're looking at it 
This is why we have to act to reduce that time to detect, to know as quickly as possible you've been breached. Forget the idea that you can make yourself 100% secure. You can't. You want to do everything you can, however, to make yourself as secure as possible. But at the same time, having the ability to go ahead and understand that you have been attacked, you have been breached, and what are the actions you take to correct it. So what can we do? And now I'm legally obligated, of course, to talk about AI. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad somebody else feels the same way as I do about it. AI is not going to solve your problem. There's no magic button. Forget Hollywood. You can't ask how, what's going on in the network. But AI does have a role to play. And that role is productivity. It makes what you have work better. Whether it's a machine learning based AI, whether it's the newer gen AI, being able to ask, what does this mean? All of that helps me in understanding what's going on in the network so I can respond sooner. It does have a role to play, but don't let any vendor come in and tell you AI is going to solve all your problems. Another thing that can be done, there's an interesting technology out there called reconnaissance. And this is that technology that looks at you from the outside in. They look at you as if they, they were a hacker finding the weak links in your chain. And using that technology, you're constantly checking yourself. What's going on? Where are my weak spots and what can I do to deal with it? Another thing you can do, work to a structure. Don't just go ad hoc and I'll do this and I'll do that. Organize in a structured way the way that you're attacking the problems, how you're implementing technology, because how is always more important than what. And one of the frameworks that's out there is NIST. There are other ones as well, but NIST is a good example that we know what the threats are. And along these different areas, protect, detect, respond, to deploy in a structured way the different technologies that are necessary to meet the objectives of each one of those steps. Also understand that the SOC is not a flat thing. It has layers. It has a hierarchy. There are different pieces that need to be respected and understood what technology applies to which. There's also a baseline. There's a foundation that a SOC has to rest on. A SOC cannot be disconnected from the network. It must be part and parcel, whether you do it yourself or you're doing it through a managed service. That ma even that managed service has to have its hooks into the underlying network. What technologies do I use? Well, you can use this as a dartboard and figure out which one you want. But the challenge and dealing with the complexity that I've already talked about, the challenge is where do I apply these technologies in the network itself? I should say in the network and in the SOC. They do go hand in glove. So we'll go back to the platform. We know what's there. We know these different functions. And now let's go ahead and apply the different technologies. First of all, we start with our baseline. These are your firewalls, your antivirus, your web application firewall. All of these things are your detect layer. These are based on what's happened in the past, not what's, what's going to happen in the future. But the majority of attacks or the majority of malware that's targeted at a network is stuff we already know about. So these different technologies work quite well in blocking those things from getting into the network itself. But as I said, you can't secure a network. It's impossible, even though we have to have that layer. So we go to the next layers. The reconnaissance I was talking about before, getting that external perspective, understanding there are contaminated domain names with spelling errors that can trick users to getting in there. And unfortunately, the human element is still the weak link in the chain. So what we want to do is try to shut that off as much as possible. But then, with my prevent layer, these technologies like, like antivirus, I need to augment them. I need to complement them with detection technologies. Now, the classic one that's been out for about 10 years is sandboxing, this idea where I, a, a file could be suspicious, could be malicious. We can detonate it in a safe area and find out. 
that technology is complemented by detection and response, whether at the endpoint or in the network layer itself. This is your second layer in your cybersecurity puzzle. Detecting, uh, excuse me, preventing and then detecting, but then we augment it with the analytics. And this is what most people, these technologies, analytics, SIM, SOAR, these are what most people deal with or think of when they think about a SOC. But you have to think of the bigger holistic picture of what's going on. Then we can add to it other services. If you're using a managed service or want to augment what you're doing in-house with a managed service, fine. Leverage your vendors. Leverage third parties, whoever the, wherever the source may be, if it can help you to understand and better protect your environment, it's a good investment. And then test yourself. It's a continuous, a continuous environment. We talk about continuous improvement, continuous development. It's the same thing here, testing yourself. Never be content. Never stop thinking that where else could I be hacked? What else, where's another weak point? Because as users come and go, there's always an opportunity for the hacker to get in. The end result of all of this is reducing that time to attack, excuse me, the time to detect. You can't keep it out, so you want to react as quickly as possible. And you can use sports analogies here, talking about offense and defense. And that's, that's exactly what we have. Keeping that down to the shortest possible time because it doesn't take long. Once the hacker gets in, now, if they're in, they're looking for, it could be an incidental attack where, oh, look, I got in, let's see what's there. It could be a targeted attack. Once they find what they're looking for, what they believe is high value data, you've lost. That data is out. So you want to shut that window as much as possible. And for those of you who are thinking about cyber insurance, having something like this is absolutely critical to getting a cyber insurance policy that you can afford. Understanding, having the capabilities in your own network are, is absolutely crucial if cyber, if cyber insurance is something that you're thinking about. So just a little bit about Fortinet. We're a pioneer in the cybersecurity industry. We're a Silicon Valley startup. We're based outside of San Francisco. And we are also a pioneer in the use of AI. We've been using our own AI neural net network technology for the past 10 years, and most recently have introduced a Gen AI interface to some of our other capabilities. But the key piece of all of this, the SOC and the network have to be connected together. They have to be part and parcel of the same. Sure, you can bring other vendors in, and if you do that, you think about integration and collaboration which leads to automation, which is one of the key words of security operations. If this has been of interest to you, if I've said anything that's piqued your interest, please, my colleagues are down on the show floor. Come on down. Let's have a talk about this. Other than that, I'll turn it back over and say thank you. We might have time for one or two questions, if there's any questions for Patrick. If there's any brave people out there. <laughs> I told you, they're always afraid. What is one of the biggest lessons learned then that you've seen? Uh, the biggest lesson, I made a joke of it, but there are no silver bullets. You need to look at, you don't look at security in an isolated environment. It, you need to look at it across the whole piece and understand you're either in a state of attack or you're going to be attacked. Never stop thinking about that. Yeah, thank you. Any other? Oh, yeah, let's go to oh. Christian. Hi. Talking about the ex external attack surface and specifically with cloud, it changes it enormously. And more, a lot of organizations tend to treat cloud separately from their main network, and it can't be. It's an extension of yourself. So the technologies, unfortunately, the technologies, techniques, and best practices that we've been using for years in the on-premises world are also available for the cloud world. The key is making sure the two of them have unlimited visibility between them. Yes. 
exactly. That's what, I mean, that's, I mean, cybersecurity from a, a business perspective is a growing business. Unfortunately, it's, you know, some people benefit and other people don't. But that, but cloud, which is not going away, is a big driver of that. Any other questions? Oh, thank you, Patrick. Very My pleasure. Nice to see you. Thank Take you. care.